Hello everyone, and welcome back to Resident Evil Zero. So we're continuing where we left off from the last video. We had a cutscene that showed that Billy was okay, but he got pushed uh, by something in the water, and now he's somewhere in the bottom of this facility. So we have to make our way towards him. But first, before we do that, we have to turn the power back on. So there was a puzzle that we looked at. It was a grid of uh, flashing lights, and it's seen right there in the back. But that puzzle is probably the most annoying puzzle that I've come across so far for this game. It requires you to sort of do some mental gymnastics in order to predetermine where the dots are going to light up. The way that it was explained to me uh, a long time ago, and I had to look it up to kind of like remember it, is that you have to think of this as a four by seven grid. And so because when you hit one node, the connecting nodes will light up two from that node that you hit, then that would essentially like cover the entire thing but it's oh so many tries so many tries before I got it because I was like this combination works but I have one missing or this combination works and I have like three missing so it's it's a it's a lot to remember but we get it we get it uh, this time around. I only showed the last fail because I did spend like 14 minutes um, sitting and going through this until taking a break, coming back, taking a break, coming back, and then we got it. Because I don't want to do that again, I am saving. So I know I save a lot, and I know the end score for this run is not going to be great because I know that I saved, like, a ton of times. And the game penalizes you for it. Like, you're really only supposed to be doing, like, one or two saves per level. And for me, I'm like, I did a whole bunch of things. I need to save, like immediately and like I said in the last video I'm glad that I'm playing on normal because if I was playing on professional I probably would have gotten like one ink ribbon for this entire place and I would have had to have like saved those three uh, cartridges that were a part of the ink ribbon because if I 
oversaved. That was it. <laughs> if I died in the boss and the last time I had saved was like after doing a whole bunch of stuff, like two hours earlier, I would have to do those things all over again. I think officially, at least for my run, that was the last Mimic Marcus I had to fight. Uh, the other enemies that you fight before getting to the boss at the end of this is like um, some regular zombies, some pale zombies, which take a lot of ammo because they're a little bit different, and then some two hunters and two special two special um two special enemies so that's the prototype tyrant and then the queen leech who's at the end of this game uh that's the main boss Oh, and a zombie frog called a lurker that appears on the dam right after you drain it. There's like two places that they appear. Uh, one going from one building to another and the other on the open uh, dam gate wall. He'll pop up there randomly and kind of say, hey. And he has two attacks. 
One is where he swipes you with the tongue, and the other is if you're a distance from him, but still reachable uh, on the same plane as him, he'll stick his tongue out, grab your ankle, and pull you towards him, and then just swallow the character. And you can't break out of it unless you have your partner with you, and your partner has to shoot the frog in order for it to break its hold. And then after that, the frog just jumps back into the water. And I was like, so... Is there any way to kill him? And I'm sure there is, like, magnum ammos or grenades or something like that. But is it worth it to do it? No. So how I avoid him is that when he pops up on the open gate after you drain the water, I just climb back up the ladder again. And he looks around and then it's like, huh. And then leaves. <laughs> that's, that's all I do. Rebecca, where am I? You're safe now. Are you okay? Hmm? What could have done this? They must have been used as test subjects in Marcus's research. He must have kept messing around with the mother virus. Billy? You stay here. Let's go! Okay. First things first, after reuniting with Billy, is that we're going to come back into this room and solve the bridge problem. 
the basis is that you have to move these blocks a certain way so that you can form a bridge on the other side when you fill the pool with water. If not, then the way to reset it is just to leave and then walk back into the room and the boxes will have magically reset.
All right, so now that that's out of the way, we can bring Billy back out of this little pool area and have Rebecca fill it with water and then walk across and get that. And then we can move on to the next set of problems. <laughs> I'm not sure what to call these guys. I think we have all are just under the same consensus that they're called the pale zombies. And they're a little bit tougher than the regular zombies because they take more bullets. Even with the enhanced gun, they take more bullets. I think it's like six bullets for the enhanced and quite a few for the unenhanced gun that Billy is holding um, compared to the three to four bullets for regular zombies. So if you have like ammo for your shotgun or if you want to conserve ammo, just be careful because like, they, like they're doing right now, they will swarm you and you have to kind of put them down maybe like two or three times before they are finally dead.
from what we know for this game one, two, and three, the umbrella was not prepared at all. And that's just because majority of the people that worked on Umbrella were scientists. Not a lot of them had military training. That doesn't mean that they didn't have people who were former military um, working for them as like their security guards and their militia forces, but they really didn't know what the T virus could do outside of a constant outside of like a controlled environment such as a lab. They knew that it could mutate things, but they didn't know that the extent of the mutations would be so much that everybody within the surrounding area would basically become infected, especially them, once it broke out. So, yeah, I think that note is kind of, like, really telling because they just sent them in there thinking, yeah, everybody should be dead thanks to the T-virus, but they didn't think that it would reanimate corpses. They just thought it would mutate, like, the local fauna. I really appreciate that the game has given us a note on how to make battery acid. <laughs> so if you haven't already picked up a red chemical um, and put it into Rebecca's chemistry set, there was a few red canisters in the factory. I, on a whim, picked one up because I was just like, I don't remember exactly what the first note told us about i knew red and green make a stripping agent but i didn't remember if it was blue or a different color that we needed to make sulfuric acid <laughs> so i really appreciate the game kind of like reminding us like hey if you add these two things together and then industrialized water you'll get battery acid and you can use that to refill a battery, it's like, I don't have a battery, but I'll keep that in mind, thanks. Just a little bit of a transition because after I pick up that battery acid note, I do a lot of item swapping between Billy and Rebecca and then swapping back so I'll be able to pick up whatever I need and have at least space for something else. So I didn't think that you guys would want to see that and in the object of essentially trying to streamline my gameplays, I do a little bit more transitions once we get closer to like the end 
of games just so that we can save on time and I don't drag it out for you guys. This is one of the places where the lurker can appear. It's happened to me once before. Usually he makes his grand entrance on the other bridge, uh, the dam gate that you lower as Rebecca and to say hi. But sometimes he'll appear on here and I'm not sure what the timing on it is. I don't know if he appears on here because he's like, you're taking too long or you're spending too long in one place on this or if he's just appearing just to appear you know his AI just is very random you know
Just like the Mimic Marcus, this is the last time you'll fight the Tyrant. He doesn't have any new special moves, nothing really interesting happens. There's enough space to avoid everything, unlike the first time you fight him, which basically was in a tiny, tiny room. So it was harder to avoid him. But with this instance, it's easier to do so. And yeah, you can pretty much take him out before he even walks around the corner. Now that we've picked up the motherboard, we just take the elevator back up one floor to the, I guess it's like a transportation materials area. And we're just going to send Rebecca across in a metal box. Like it's literally a metal box. We're going to send her across in a gondola. But once we do so, she'll be able to lower the gates for us and drain the water and then we can walk across and meet her in that area. But first we have to make our way to there.
We're actually getting close to the end of the video, so I want to go ahead and say my goodbyes now. So thank you so much for joining us. We're getting close to the end. There's really only one video left for Resident Evil Zero. And then after that, I will kind of make an announcement of the games you already see that we're playing through. Banishers, Ghost of New Eden, which I'm really enjoying and I hope that you guys are enjoying that playthrough. And of course, Sable which we're still kind of taking our time through because it's, you know, our chill game. But other than that, I will see you in the next video for the finale. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Bye!